my name is uh, David Kobia. I am with uh, Ushahidi. Um, now, Ushahidi has opened up uh, a doorway for us to, to figure out what organizations and people on the ground need um, uh, during a crisis when trying to share data or trying to gather information from uh, whatever crisis is happening. Now, um, I'm a developer, so my Ignite talk today is trying to give a perspective of uh, trying to develop an interface that works for uh, organizations and uh, crowdsourcing in general. Um, now, when we started out, our goal was to uh, gather all these data coming out of uh, a crisis, you know, via citizen-generated uh, media, news media, and, uh, you know, get all this stuff coming in, either by mobile phone, uh, email, uh, or via the web, uh, drop it into the Ushahidi engine, and try to output uh, some, some, useful, some useful data. Now, um, when we first started out, uh, clearly, um, it, uh, the challenge was to visualize and uh, create a timeline of events with, with categories, and rather make, make a complete sense of what was coming in. Um, one, of our first, uh, one of our most recent instances was a swine flu instance. Now, uh, the challenge was to uh, get all this data coming in and create uh, timelines, and as you can see, uh, this actually looks uh, pretty simple, but uh, it, there was quite a process coming into this, and I'll highlight some of the challenges. Um, what we found was out in the field, uh, with some of these uh, tools that we have, one of the biggest things uh, that we have to uh, ch uh, um, deal with is low bandwidth, especially in a crisis of uh, places like uh, mostly in Africa, for instance. Now, this is, a, you know, like it, this particular example has a 13 seconds uh, downloading on Ushahidi instance. But uh, the truth is, out there, the bandwidth is, uh, is much lower. So you have to deal with people with uh, 14 kilobyte, 28 kilobyte speeds. So we have to figure out challenge. I mean, how, how, how do we overcome these challenges? And um, low, uh, some of these tools that we use, too, are very uh, media intensive. Uh, you have to think about mapping tiles, JavaScript, you know, all this stuff that we try to come up with to create all these colorful maps and graphs. Those become an issue out there. Uh, now, uh, and of course, the next challenge was uh, how do you deal with large data sets? And this can quickly become a, a problem out there. Um, so, of course, uh, we, we, we came up with client-side clustering of, of, uh, of, of mapping data. And this is pretty easy for small data sets, because you can do this on the client side. But we quickly realized that, uh, you know, um, this definitely wouldn't be enough. Uh, we actually had a guy uh, try to upload uh, two million data points into an Ushahidi instance. And uh, <laughs> that didn't go very well, clearly. <laughs> so the, the, the next step was uh, to try and come up with uh, uh, server-side uh, clustering of, of, of data, which has proved to be a greater challenge. I mean, there's uh, mapping server software out there, but we are trying to develop uh, Ushahidi so that it's freely downloadable by anyone and uh, installable on their own servers, so we're trying to avoid having to use uh, the more complex mapping servers out there. So uh, uh, coming up with, uh, uh, you know, mathematical, somewhat complex uh, clustering algorithms um, has been a challenge for us, but it's something we're working on. And then, of course, uh, the most important thing is building analytics into whatever tool we have, because uh, we can collect all this data, but it only is useful once, uh, you know, we start to make real sense of what's going on. Um, and these, of course, are reports coming in by day, by time, by country. Um, the other challenge has, uh, you know, uh, Mobile interfaces, of course, are proliferated in uh, most third world countries, right? Um, uh, like the penetration rate in, in Africa is about 30%, meaning 300 million people out there actually have cell phones that can send in useful information, right? But uh, SMS is, you know, of course, doesn't have any metadata. So it's uh, interpreting some of that information coming in is a challenge. So what we've done is, uh, you know, some options have been pre-geocoding, uh, like cities, so that you know you have something like uh, Kisumu that it picks up on easily. 
But again, uh, doing this on a wider scope for a global instance it would, might be more of a challenge, but it's easier for smaller instances. Um, and then, of course, uh, 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 one of the biggest challenges, too, was uh, creating the mobile, mobile phone interfaces, which we've done for uh, Java-based phones, uh, iPhones, Android, and, and Windows phones, too. And, uh, <coughs> of course, the next step was uh, creating, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if some of you are familiar with Frontline SMS, but uh, Frontline SMS actually solves some of our problems out there in the field because, you know, if you have a, a local instance of Ushahidi out there in the field that you do not need to be on the internet to work on, it makes it a lot easier. So what we did was uh, take the Frontline SMS tool and build in an Ushahidi uh, tab this is still work in progress, but what it actually does is allow you to, um, to create reports out in the field, and then which can later be synced up to the web with uh, an Ushahidi instance. And then uh, actually, just to close my, my presentation, uh, I just want you guys to remember that uh, each of those dots on a map are actually a life or a life-threatening situation. So um, as much as uh, we, you know, we're doing our crisis mapping and creating all these colorful elements, it's wise not to forget that we need to uh, make this data actually actionable and useful as we move forward. Thank you.